Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast but too afraid that it may cost you too much money? Well, guess what? There is an easy way to do that with the Anchor app. The best thing about it, it is zero dollars and free cents. It is completely free. The best thing about Anchor is that there is a creation tool that allows you to edit from either your computer or from your phone. Anchor also will distribute all of your podcasts through Spotify, Apple Music, and all other streaming services, so you won't have to worry about a thing. You can also make money from doing your podcast, doing sponsorships like this with no minimum, minimum listenership. And the best part about your podcast is that everything is going to be in one place. Using Anchor for me has been a wonderful experience. It's so easy to do, and you can do it all from your phone, or if you want to do it on the computer, you can do that as well. All you have to do is go to the website, anchor.fm, or you can download the free Anchor app. All you got to do is type in Anchor on iOS or Google Store, and you can start recording your podcast today. You're listening to the Chandler Burton Podcast. Turn it up to 11 and rip the knob off. This is Chandler Burton. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Chandler Burton Podcast. I am your host, Chandler Burton, and it has been a couple of weeks since I have done my last podcast. The last podcast that I did was about two weeks ago. I did a Space Jam, a new legacy spoiler review with my friend Miguel, Jack, and Miguel's girlfriend, Bethany, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, Took a little time off because I was still working some stuff with my YouTube channel, trying to get some stuff done there, but I am back now with another episode for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the podcast here today. Uh, Just a couple of things before we get started into today's topic. Uh, Next week, I am going to be doing an interview with Cosmic. He's actually one of my really good friends. He's a very popular speedrunner in the speedrunner community. Um, I think he plays number one on the original Super Mario Brothers, so I'm super excited to talk with him, be able to laugh and catch up with an old friend, so I'm super excited about that. And again, today we're going to be talking about probably a topic that I think will be a lot of fun. Now, I was going to do top 10 my top 10 favorite movies of all time but i figured that this wouldn't be as funny as this topic here today today's topic is going to be my top 10 worst movies that i've ever seen now i'm going to kind of break it down here kind of explain as we go along is so obviously i have not seen every single movie in the entire world i would love to if i ever got the chance could you imagine watching every movie in the world that would be incredible but I'm going to be basing off of movies that I have personally seen, whether movies that just kind of disappointed me, that just did not work, that were just straight up bad. So there are going to be a lot of movies on this list that actually I think will probably shock some people that are on this list. Um, but again, it's just based on my own personal opinion. Again, my ri- my list is not the right list. It's just my list. So let's go in. Let's have a fun time. I hope the listener will have a good time listening to this podcast here. And then, of course, as always, about halfway through, we're going to take a musical break and show you some band, show you some music that I've been listening to for the past couple of weeks here and try to give them a little more uh, recognition. But without further ado, let's go in and get into the episode today with my top 10 worst movies that I've ever seen. All right, so how we'll do it here is I will give you five of the movies, and I'll talk about why I don't like these movies. And then after we do five, we'll take the musical break. And then after that, I'll give you my top five, and then we'll kind of wrap things up from there. So I'm super excited about this episode. Again, I hope you have a good time listening to it and probably disagree with me on a lot of these movies. But again, I'm a big movie guy. I always have been ever since I was younger. My dad says I am the harshest critic that he knows, even though I don't think I'm really that harsh when it comes to movies. I just like to give my honest opinion. If I don't like it, I don't like it. But if I love it, I do love it. And I may eventually do a top 10 of my favorite movies of all time, but I figured this one would just be a lot more fun. Um, again, I'm more excited about doing interviews and stuff now, I'm trying to get some more bands on the podcast. And again, Cosmic will be my first big interview 
for the Chandler Burton podcast, and so I'm really excited to do an interview with him. But for right now, we're going to do just another top 10 list here, and uh, we will go ahead and get started with my number 10. And these are going to be in order. So number 10 will be the movie that is not horrible, but it's still bad, but I probably could watch it. Pretty much anything five and below, I am not going to watch ever again. I, I would not be able to tolerate it. So we'll go ahead and get started with number 10. Now, number 10 is going to be Cars 2. That's right. Disney and Pixar's Cars 2. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I am not even a fan of the Cars franchise. I think all three of them are absolutely ridiculous, and I think they're actually, well, quite stupid. Uh, the only thing that Cars did right was the area in Disneyland. That is an amazing recreation of Radiator Springs. The rides are really fun. The environment's really fun. It's really, really cool. And I will say, to be honest, Cars 1 did have a, a message about kind of, you know, trying to be a better person and... Uh, Try, trying to find that those nostalgic days of your life and, you know, be just be nice to people. Because I've mentioned before, Lightning McQueen is awful. He is a trash of a human being. Well, he's not a human being. He's a car. Which, again, that's one of my biggest issues. Is I don't like how they talk. I don't like how they have tongues, teeth. I just find that really uncomfortable. But I love Toy Story. And anyway, it's just a weird thing that I get into a lot of people that ask me why I don't like these movies. It's just the anatomy of the car just does not make any sense to me. But... That's not the reason why I don't like Cars 2. So Cars 1, again, was an okay film. It was fine for what it is. Definitely not any kind of Pixar movie I want to pop in and watch again. I remember when they announced Cars 2, it was back in 2011. I was kind of excited for it. I was like, you know what? This could be an actually a fun, interesting film. But, dude, that sucked. That movie was terrible. It is the worst Pixar movie they've ever done. And I don't know exactly what happened because even the bad Pixar movies, in my opinion, like Brave or The Good Dinosaur is not bad, but it's definitely not their best. There's still a message there that families and kids can take away from. Cars 2, there's nothing there. There is just a soulless, lifeless movie. And they put Mater as the main character in this film. And to be honest, I don't really like Mater. If you're a Layer of the Cable Guy fan, you're probably going to like him a lot. But side characters generally never work when it comes to making like a full-on motion picture. Even a cartoon, like you look, for example, the Patrick Starr show, you know, the SpongeBob. So SpongeBob, Patrick Starr got his own show, and it just doesn't do very good. Or you look at something like Jimmy Neutron. Uh, they had a thing called Planet Sheen based on a side character, and that lasted barely one season. So... I don't know why they thought Cars 2 was a good idea. Well, I'll tell you why it was a good idea, because the first one made so much money off of merchandise. They're like, yeah, we got to do a Cars 2. But it felt like they didn't really try with this one. I will say the animation is very good. Like, the background environments and everything was really cool. But the whole spy element of the film and everything about it, it just led me to believe that this is just, this is just not a good movie. It's a really disappointing sequel. And it is, without question, the worst Pixar movie. And I love Pixar. They rarely miss, but this one hit miss so bad that I put it at number 10. Now, if it was on and I was watching it with like a younger crowd or whatever, whoever I was with, I probably would sit and watch it and I wouldn't want to blow my brains up. But as me as an adult, I would not ever put this movie in to watch. Other movies I would, like the Toy Story movies, Monsters Inc., The Incredibles, I could put those in at any time and watch them. But Cars 2 or any of the Cars movies, it ain't going to happen. So number 10, I'm going to give it to Cars 2. I know, this list is already pretty shocking. All right, so number 9. This one, I think a lot of people actually would probably agree with me here, and I'm, I'm being honest. Number 9 is going to be Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. This is one of the most disappointing films I've ever seen. And it's not technically a bad movie. It's in frame. It's well shot. It's a really pretty movie. I will say this. It's probably the best looking Star Wars movie. Ryan Johnson did a good job of like putting everything together and like the visual effects are absolutely incredible. But when it comes to the story, which again, I don't care about anything else if you don't have a good story. I always compare it to an ice cream sundae, right? So like an ice cream sundae, you have to have that ice cream. That's going to be the foundation. And in this case, that's going to be the story. And then you can stack everything else on top of it. Like you go and put some action, uh, you know, some comedy or whatever you want to do, depending on the film. 
The Last Jedi did not have any of that. It had so many parts in the movie that did not make sense. The whole Canto bite scene totally could have been cut out because that part led to nothing. And then Kylo Ren was the only good part of the film, but even I felt like he was kind of misused in the film. You know, they killed off Snoke. There were so many things about this movie. It was just horribly paced. And to be honest, it was frankly quite boring. I was sitting there in the theater. I was like, this is not good. And that's the worst. You know, you get excited when the title crawl pulls up and you're explaining and the movie starts off with a Yo Mama joke. And I'm just like, this doesn't feel like Star Wars. It feels like a Marvel film, which I do love the Marvel movies. But Star Wars, I don't know. I want to take Star Wars seriously. I, I take it very seriously, to be honest, probably more serious than I probably should. So after watching this film, it is without question the worst Star Wars film like of, of the Skywalker saga. I, I can watch Phantom Menace and Attack the Clones, and those movies are bad. Like, I'm not going to try to defend those films. They are bad. But at least it's got some parts in it where I can laugh and enjoy it with my friends. Like, Attack of the Clones is really bad, but it has a lot of moments in it that just crack me up. Last Jedi is taking so serious that I'm just like, I can't handle what this movie's trying to do. And honestly, the entire sequel trilogy was so disappointing. The only thing I liked that Disney has done is I really like Jedi Fallen Order, the video game, and I really liked Rogue One a lot. I'm, not, I'm actually a fan of the Han Solo movie as well, but the sequel trilogy, 7, 8, and 9, no good. No good at all. It's really disappointing what happened with this. And, you know, J.J. Abrams even came out and said we didn't have a plan for any of this here. And, again, going back to that foundation, if you don't have that foundation, you're just going to have, like, a, the ice cream. You know, you don't have the ice cream. You're going to have, like, this hot fudge, syrup, whipped cream. It's going to be good. But there's really no substance there. So you have to have a good story, and it has to make sense to what else is going on. And The Last Jedi did not do that. So, honestly, it's number nine because, again, it does look cool. It does have some cool moments in it, I will say that for sure. There are definitely some shocking moments as well. But, seriously, Ryan Johnson, you're really good at making your own material. Like, Knives Out was so good. Like, stick with that, dude. Like, just stick with your own creative stuff, because Nights Out was fantastic. All right, number eight. Number eight. What could number eight be? Number eight is going to be Transformers The Last Night. Look at that. We had The Last Jedi and The Last Night. That's actually I just realized that. That's hilarious. Look, honestly, I don't like any of these movies. Any of them. Bumblebee was tolerable. It's not great, but it's definitely tolerable. Dude, the last, the last, almost the last Jedi again. The last night, I almost walked out of that movie. My dad and I saw it, and we're like, should we leave? Like, it was that bad. There was, it's just so, all, honestly, all the movies should be on this list because there's no substance to them. They're all stupid. Michael Bay is the worst director on the entire planet. He degrades women, he doesn't know how to shoot normal scenes. The action scenes are cool. I'll give them that. Some of them are pretty cool. But again, it doesn't give me a reason to go see it ever again. Those movies are trash. And I don't care. You can fight me all day and try to convince me that they're good. The Last Night was the worst one. I almost put Revenge of the Fallen. But Revenge of the Fallen was so, so bad. But it has had those moments that made me laugh. Like, the acting is terrible. It's really bad. But The Last Night was one of the movies that I seriously told my dad. I was like, are we going to leave? Or are we going to stay for the whole two hours and 45 minutes of this film? And the movie even opens up like a whole King Arthur battle. Even my dad's like, are we in the right movie? Like, is this? And then, like, these Transformers show up in King Arthur's time. It is the stupidest. I can't handle. I just can't handle how stupid that movie is. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen when it comes like a big when it comes to like a big studio movie, this is one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't even want to pop it in to watch it for even the cool action scenes. It's terrible, and no one can convince me otherwise. It's awful. It really is that bad, and I mean that sincerely with all my heart. Oh, I got to calm down for a sec. Holy crap. Okay. I'm going to get it pulled up here. So, we just did, again, we have Cars 2, The Last Jedi, Transformers, The Last Knight. So the next movie on my list, I am cheating a little bit, but I have to put them on here. It's going to be The Twilight Saga. All of those movies are awful, and you cannot convince me any otherwise. They are the worst, worst movies ever. I can't even believe that these were approved by a studio. If I was Stephanie Myers, the writer, like the creator of the book, 
and I saw these movies, I would be ashamed. I would be like, you're not putting these out. These are terrible. They're awful. The first one is the only one that I could tolerate. I'm not saying I'm going to watch it again, but the first one is the only one that I was like, okay, it's fine. It's definitely not for me, but it's fine. Dude, I don't remember. New Moon, Breaking... Not Breaking... It's New Moon, Eclipse, and then Breaking Dawn Part 1 and 2. Horrible. It is the worst saga I've ever seen in my entire life. And what sucks, too, is that Robert Pattinson is actually a good actor, and Kirsten Stewart actually is a good actor. They were just given bad material. Like, seriously, Robert Pattinson has proved that he is a phenomenal actor. And uh, Kirsten Stewart's done a couple of things, too. I'm like, wow, you're actually way better than I led you to be and i was like wow i'm actually really impressed with your performance in these certain movies like an american ultra she was in that movie with jesse eisenberg that was a really good performance and then robert pattinson seriously he's done stuff like uh like uh good things he's doing the new batman movie and he's doing a lot of stuff and i'm like dude he can act he really can and when he's given the right stuff he is phenomenal at acting i'm super excited to see his take on the batman but these twilight movies are awful you look at movies like like the Hunger Games, right? Those are also based on a book, uh, based on a book series. You also look at Harry Potter that are also taken on the book series. Those were handled in such care, and they really drew a lot of inspiration from those books, saying like, okay, we're going to use stuff from the book, but we're kind of kind of do our own thing with it. Catching Fire is one of the best movies I've ever seen, one of the best sequels I've ever seen, like in the Hunger Games. And then the Deathly Hollows Part 2 in Harry Potter is seriously, like, it was like a worldwide event. It was so cool, and it was so hype. I can't imagine anyone going to Breaking Dawn Part 2 going like, this is incredibly hype, and I cannot wait to watch this over and over. The movies are terrible. So I'm putting all four of them, I think they're five, I guess there's five movies. They're terrible. Honestly, if I was Stephanie Myers, I would be ashamed. I'd be like, you're not putting these in theaters, and I can't believe the studio released these going, yeah, these are great. Probably because they knew they'd make money, because people love the books. It's, it's absolutely disgusting how people just want to do anything for money. And it really pisses me off. And I mean that sincerely. It really, really drives me insane. Okay. I'm getting really heated with this. So let, <laughs> let's do uh, let's do one more. And then we're going to take a musical break. Because I think I need to take a cool off really quick. So number six is definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. I actually could watch this movie over and over. Because it's so funny. And it's so hilarious. And it's so bad that it deserves to be watched at least once, but it is a bad film, and that's going to be Super Mario Brothers. This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. I can't believe that this movie was made. I obviously wasn't alive when this movie came out, so I actually watched it a couple of years ago. I, I, like, I had to see how bad it was, and oh, dude, it's bad. It <laughs> I mean, the very beginning of the movie is like a giant meteor had stuck the earth and all the dinosaurs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? This is terrible. And they go to like, I remember, they go to like Dino City. I should have watched this movie before I did uh, before I did this. But dude, oh my gosh, Bob Hopkins as Mario was so freaking funny, dude. I was like, and this is, I just, I can't handle how bad the movie is. Like, I mean, it, it got to the point where even Nintendo's like, okay, we're not making any more movies because this ruined our reputation. So I'm actually shocked that we're getting another Mario Brothers movie. It does come out next year. I think it's just called Super Mario Brothers, and it's going to be from Illumination Studios, who made uh, Despicable Me and those types of movies. So the same people, they're definitely hit or miss when it comes to making their films. So I'm hoping that the Mario movie will be good because Secret Life of Pets was pretty good. Despicable Me was okay. And I, I hope they can do it right. And I know, I think the best thing is to keep Mario animated. Obviously, they could have done an animated film back in the day. Um, they could have done, like, a hand-drawn movie, which actually probably have been pretty cool. But, dude, to be honest, this movie, it's so funny that you actually should watch it. Some of the effects in it are really bad. It's a really, really funny movie. Uh, it is It is bad. It deserves to be on this list without question, but it is definitely a guilty pleasure film. It is... <sighs> one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I've been saying that about all these movies, but seriously, it is really, really bad. Okay, I need to take a breather because I actually do have a headache and I'm sweating because these movies are really, really getting me angry. So we're going to take a musical break and then we'll be right back with the rest of the top 10 worst movies that I have ever seen in my entire life. 
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far of my top 10 worst movies that I've ever seen in my entire life. I had a lot of fun putting this list together. So again, as usual, I like to take a musical break to show off some new music that I've been listening to lately. So today we're going to be checking out the song Sabotage by the band called Relapse. So again, um, I run a channel on YouTube called Chandler Burton Entertainment and I get requests to do music all the time. And one of my subscribers sent me a message on Instagram I'm saying I think you should do this song. It's really, really cool. And that's the song I'm going to listen to today, again, called Sabotage. Um, I actually was able to become really good friends with the vocalist, Ethan. He is a really nice guy, really, really humble dude. And he absolutely loves music. And these guys, I think, definitely will be bigger one day. They're not a signed band right now, as far as I know. But I really hope they get the recognition that they deserve. So Ethan's an awesome guy. I'm glad to call him my friend. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this song, again, called Sabotage by the band relapse. Here we go.
All right. Well, welcome back from the song break. I hope you guys enjoyed the song. Again, I'm a, I'm a friend with the vocalist of this band. He's a really nice guy, and his music is awesome. So if you like what you hear, make sure you go check out the band Relapse. That should be having some new music coming out soon. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Music, and you can find them on YouTube as well. So just want to let you guys know that here. Make sure you go support them if you like what you hear. So we're going to continue on here with the top 10 movies, the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. We're going to Start. Next one is going to be at number five, and this one is really bad. But it's kind of like Super Mario Brothers, where I'm just like, dude, I, I got, I just gotta love it for what it is. And that's going to be Steel. Now, a lot of people may not have heard of this movie before, and to be honest, I watched it recently, and it really was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. So let me give you a little backstory on Steel here. So. So I got. We'll talk about the movie. Then I'll give you a little backstory on the character of Steel because I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a geek when it comes to comic books and stuff like that. So, so this movie stars Shaquille O'Neal. This is his it was his second film that he did. So we did a what's it called Kazam or something where he was like a genie and uh, I was horrible. That movie was trash and nobody liked it. Nobody likes that movie. It's it's terrible. But Steel. Might be a little bit worse, in my opinion. It's really, really bad. So, and I'll be honest, Shaquille O'Neal, again, he's an athlete. He's not an actor. And he's not he's not a good actor. And I'm sorry. And I know, like, it's not really going to affect him if I ever say anything like that. He's not really going to care. I don't think he'll ever listen to this podcast. But if he does, I'm sorry, sir, but your acting is uh, its actually quite awful. And it's no better in Steel. And I'm not going to blame him for it, because there are certain scenes in Steel where they set him up to look dumb. Like, they should have, like, got an editor in there to cut some of that stuff out, but nope, they left it all in there, and they're just, I'm like, dude, if I, I was in that position, I'd be so mad. It's seriously, it's, it's a superhero movie, and it's actually on HBO Max. And I was like, I need to watch this. And so I popped on, I put on my PlayStation 4, I popped on HBO Max, and I put on Steel, and it was the best time I've ever had in my entire life. I watched it by myself, and you know it's bad when I'm by myself laughing in my room, and I'm just like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's not supposed to be funny. So a little backstory on Steel. So Steel actually, so... If you aren't familiar with the death of Superman, first of all, you should probably go read that. It's a really good comic, really good graphic novel. So after the death of Superman, after he fights... So Doomsday kills Superman, right? And so he's dead for a while. And what happens is because Superman is dead, the world needs other protectors. So instead of going to, like, you know, Batman or Wonder Woman, they decided to... Uh, to recruit some other characters, and one of them is called Steel, and he is in the comic books. He looks like a big old, tall, looks like Thor. He's got like a hammer or something like that. It's really, really bad. So that's kind of where the character is based off. It's based on the, the death of Superman story arc, which again, that story is really good, but they took this, they took this idea and they put Shaquille O'Neal in it, and it was really bad. It was a total misfire of a film, and everything about it is just awful. The acting is bad. The cinematography is really bad. Shaquille O'Neal. If so, I'm trying. So the only movies I've really seen athletes become actors, like essentially, is so we got Shaquille O'Neal in Steel. We got Michael Jordan in Space Jam. Now we got LeBron James in Space Jam too. I'm gonna be honest with you. Out of all three of them. I'm probably going to pick Michael Jordan. I he He's really bad when he's up against the Looney Tunes, when he's acting to nothing. But again, he's not an actor. He's an athlete. He's the greatest athlete of all time. And so, honestly, when he was with, like, Bill Murray or Larry Bird or Wayne Knight, he did pretty good when he was with other people. Like, that last scene in the basketball game, when he got to be with Wayne Knight and Bill Murray showed up, Michael Jordan wasn't that bad. He was actually okay. And obviously, again, he's not an actor. But... With Steel, Shaquille O'Neal is with people the entire... There's no cartoons in this movie, and it is atrociously bad. Again, I know he's an athlete, not an actor, but man, you should... Seriously, I know this is on the worst movies of all time, in my opinion, but if you have HBO Max, you really should give this movie a chance. It is one of the funniest bad movies I've ever seen. It, I'm not going to watch it again, but it really... You should give it a chance. It's really, really funny. 
Okay, number four. Now, number four is another movie that I watched a couple of months ago. I am a huge fan of the podcast with the YouTube channel called Double Toasted. Uh, they used to be called Spill.com, but I'm a huge fan of those guys. And they have made multiple videos on this. And I watched all of them. I was like, I got to watch the movie. And I got to say, at number four, Tyler Perry's A Fall from Grace. It is one of the best, worst movies I've ever seen. The acting is terrible. There's so many scenes where the characters, there's a scene at a diner where you see an old man in the background. He's drinking nothing. There's nothing in the cup. He's not eating any food. You see boom mics. You see hair, like wigs. Like Tyler Perry looks like his wigs look like they got it from like a Dollar Tree. Like it's so horrible. And then I realized, I was like, brother, you got like a billion dollars. Like how could you make a movie this bad? But it turns out that they shot a fall from grace in five days, five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday had the weekend off. I can't believe they shot it in that long. I don't know if Netflix was telling like, you need to hurry this up. And I made a whole podcast based on Tyler Perry. I gave him, not that I gave him personally advice, but I gave him like four reasons of why he should like how he could improve his films. I said, like, you know, like, let other people direct your stuff. And you, you start, you can be a co-director, but let someone else direct your stuff. Hire on a small crew and tell them, like, this is how you write and direct. And they will listen to you. And a whole bunch of other stuff. And then the other one was just spend a little money. This movie looks cheap. It looks like the, this is a movie that if I went to film school, I think people would probably be impressed. But Tyler Perry has been around for so long. And he's always putting out material that it's just it was just like the final blow. And I, I'm not trying to sound racist here, because obviously Tyler Perry definitely appeals to the African American demographic. Even even brothers and sisters were coming out on Twitter saying, Brother, that's bad. <laughs> this movie's really, really bad. Y'all need to take some time off and, and reconsider what you're doing here. But <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, it's one of the worst movies ever. Again, it's funny. Like Tyler Perry's non comedies are the funniest things he ever puts out. And again, I respect him from where he came from. He came from a very hard childhood, and he's a very, very... I mean, if I ever met him, I would tell him, oh, thank you for all the work that you've done, but brother, you just gotta slow down. Fall. I think a fall from grace was the last straw with people. Like, dude, you really need to improve your stuff, or people just aren't gonna care anymore. So number four, fall from grace. It's hilariously bad. Seriously, give it. A, it's on Netflix. Maybe you shouldn't watch it. I guess you can if you want, but it's really, really, really bad. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And Tyler Perry has made some bad movies. This is his worst one yet. Okay, number three. So we're in the top three now. These top three movies are movies that, well, the the, the top two are, you probably have never heard of before, but the third one I know you've definitely heard of before. And number three is going to be the Fantastic Four movie from 2015. This is the worst superhero movie that I have ever seen in my entire life. And yes, I think Green Lantern is a better movie than Fantastic Four from 2015. This is horrible. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. And I knew the reviews were bad going in, but I'm one of those guys where I'm like, I have to see it anyway. Because I don't care what people say. Like, there's some movies that I personally enjoy that I know that are rotten on Rotten Tomatoes and vice versa. And there's movies that are fresh that I don't like. So I'll go see the movie either way. Like, people's opinions don't affect me. I want to go see the movie. Like, I'm going to go see it anyway. It doesn't bother me. But with this movie, I I, would, I told people, like, I was like, I highly recommend you stay away from this movie. It is trash. It is garbage. Everything about it is terrible. The acting is okay because you've got, like, Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan. Like, they're good actors, but they're given just horrible material. Like, they don't even get their powers until, like, an hour and a half into the film. And the movie's like a two-hour film. Doctor Doom was horrendous. He looked like a he looked like one of those like sex dummies, one of those sex toys that you buy at like a Seattle like sex shop. I was like, this is embarrassing. He looks like a mummy, and I was like, this is so awful. And even the director of the film came out and said, "I really don't care about this. I messed up. We're not going to do it again." I'm like, this is terrible. So I'm really happy that Marvel Studios acquired 20th Century Fox. So hopefully when they make another Fantastic Four movie, this one will actually be good. Kevin Feige will be involved. And it's actually going to be the same director from the Spider-Man films, like Homecoming and Far From Home. So I'm really, 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 really hoping that we get something good. Because Fantastic Four has been beat to death with the ugly stick like 
three times. Well, I guess four times if you count the movie back in the 90s. That movie's terrible. The one in 2005 was bad, and Rise of Silver Surfer was just as bad. At least those movies are, you know, they're cheesy, and they came out at a time where they're not really connected to anything. And I guess this one isn't technically either, but it it really is bad. I know, mo- I think most people have probably seen it, um, but it, it's it's trash. It is the, seriously the worst superhero movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, I really am sweating from getting that heated, so we gotta we gotta continue on here. So number two. Now, this is a guilty pleasure movie. I was the only one of my friend group that wanted to watch this. So at number two is going to be Thanks Killing. Now, this, <laughs> this is one of the best B-rated movies I've ever seen in my life. It is hilarious. The story is about these kids that are in college and they go home for Thanksgiving break. I want to stop you right there going like i've never heard of a movie obviously you see stuff like they go on spring break or summer break i've never seen a movie where these characters are going there a whole movie is based on them hanging out for thanksgiving break i like you only get like four days i was like i, I don't know <laughs> i don't know what's going on and it's like this possessed turkey that lived back in the days of the pilgrim that still like roams the earth and i'm just like this is this is awesome. This is hilarious. And the turkey talks like this. <laughs> Dude, there are so many one-liners that I won't say on here because I try not to swear or say anything vulgar on my podcast or my YouTube channel. But, dude, if you look up clips of this movie, some of the turkey's one-liners are so funny that it is – you have to rewind it. Like, did he actually say that? It, it, it was on Netflix for a while. I don't think it's on there anymore, but seriously, the acting is bad. It's like a t- typical B-rated movie. You got the jock. You got the fat character. You got the girl who's horny for everybody. You got the nerdy guy, and then you got the girl who tries to make everyone friends, and it's just an absolute disaster of a film. But I think they knew going in that it was going to be really bad, so I think that's why it makes it so memorable for me because I found this movie – on Netflix a long time ago. Actually, Miguel, who I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast with the Space Jam, uh, when we did the Space Jam podcast, him and Jack, we actually all watched that movie at Miguel's house. I was like, dude, we got to pop this on. So we watched the whole thing, and Jack and Miguel hated it, but I love bad movies. I just think they're so freaking funny. And this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. So at number two, I'm going to give it to Thanksgiving because it really is a bad film. But it's definitely a movie I think you should definitely see. And it will definitely make your list, too, of bad movies. Because it is bad. I think they know it's bad, which kind of I respect it for. So I, I got to give them that. So number two is Thanks Killing. Number one. Now, number one is going to be a movie that I know for sure nobody, and I mean nobody, has heard of before. This I, I didn't know about this movie until about a year ago. And I was actually able to find, and I know you shouldn't be doing this, but it was uploaded to YouTube for free. The whole movie. I have YouTube Premium, so there's no commercials, there's no anything. Someone just took the film and they uploaded the whole thing. And the quality is bad, but I think that's how the movie actually looks in real life. If you wait to watch it on a DVD or Blu-ray or whatever you want to try to watch it. Don't know if it's on here, but if it is, definitely stay away from this one. It's horrible. It's trash. It's no good. It's called Axum. Axum is the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life. If you go on IMDb and type in like lowest rate of horror movies, I think Axum is number one. And it's for a good reason too. It is. So this movie is typically about these kids. It's their most generic horror movie setup. So it's about these kids who take some time off of school and they go hang out at a cabin for like a weekend, and then a guy tries to kill. Them. It's pretty much like a bad version of Friday the Thirteenth, if you kind of if you really want to break it down that way. Here's the problem with Axum. Axum, you don't know what's going on because you can't hear any of the characters. So there's no there's no microphones at all. There's like maybe one mic, and everyone's got to share it. So when you hear them talk, it kind of sounds like. This. Like, you don't know what they're saying because there's no mics going on. There's so much going on around them in the environment. They're just unsure of the situation that you are like, what is going on? I had to watch the movie with, like, subtitles. And even the subtitles had a hard time keeping up. The captains are like, brother, I don't know what's going on right now. And so the, the, the captains had to guess what was going on. That's a huge problem because there's only one mic. And then another thing that's another problem is that this movie is done 
in one take. And usually that's pretty impressive. Like you look at movies like Birdman or 1917, which essentially is just one take. It's a really impressive thing. But this movie, they just didn't have the budget or the time to cut this film. So they literally, no joke, where literally you take your phone and just hit record. You say action. The people do whatever. You just like move it around a little and then you hit the stop button. Like there's no cuts in between this film. And then Axum, who that's not even his the character's name. I don't even know the main villain's name. It's literally just this big old brown guy with an axe just trying to kill people. It is, it's not really a movie. It feels like it's like a kind of like a social type of experiment where nothing happens. And again, everything fades to black. Sometimes the music's too loud. You can't even hear the characters even more. It's the number one worst movie I've ever seen because it's not really a movie because, again, you can't hear anything. You can't really see anything because it's shot horribly. And the movie's like an hour and like 10 minutes. So it's like a 70 minute, it's like a 70 minute film. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, it is the worst movie I've ever seen. It is really funny, but you're honestly not even going to make it halfway through. Not even a quarter of the way through because you don't know what's going on. And I think that what makes it really funny. So I know a lot of people probably have never heard of that movie before, but again, Axum, literally A-X-E-M, Axum. It is the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life. It's so funny, but I really wouldn't recommend it. You can't even really watch. It's pretty much unwatchable because you can't understand what's going on. So there you go. Those are my top 10 films that I absolutely cannot stand and I will never watch again. All right, my friends. So again, that was the uh, Chandler Burton podcast. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode today. Again, those were the top 10 movies that I think are the worst movies ever created. Again, really quick. Number 10 was Cars 2. Number 9 was Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Number 8 was Transformers, The Last Night. Number 7 was the entire Twilight Saga. All terrible films. Number 6, Super Mario Brothers. Number five, Steel. Number four, A Fall from Grace. Number three, Fantastic Four from 2015. Number two, Thanks Killing. And number one, Axum. And if you ever want to check out any of those movies, may God bless you all, because all ten of them are terrible. They really are just bad, 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 bad movies. But sometimes a bad movie can put you in a good mood. So if you're feeling sad, maybe pop on a bad movie. Maybe that'll cheer you up. I do that quite a bit. So, again, I want to thank you all for checking out the podcast here today. If you guys are interested, this is going to be uploaded on YouTube under Chandler Burton Entertainment. It is my YouTube channel. If you feel interested, please feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and share the video with your friends. I really would appreciate that here. And also, as well, it's going to be available on every single streaming platform when it goes live. Again, I want to thank you so much for your time, again, during the Chandler Burton Podcast. And until next time, hope you all take care. Thank you again for your ongoing support.